walk around. I mean, if you're dressed properly. Uh, a lot can, you know, it's not like Earth. There's no water, uh, or hardly any. And breathing is hard. Uh, it's about seven millibars, uh, which is a, less than 1% of the Earth's atmospheric pressure. And uh, just, you know, we don't say millibars in what, seven hectopascals. It's so it rolls so trippingly off the tongue. Hectopascals. If I'm going too fast for you, the normal people, this is a hilarious nerd thing. So just, <laughs> and, uh, this, the reason they said that they got, that they noticed that the color was wrong was not just the coupons, as they're called, these, these colors down here. It was the, the star field of the U.S. flag. That's the, the myth. May or may not be true. And so, you know, it's uh, U.S. pride that got that noticed the color was all wrong. All right, so just to refresh, if anybody's keeping track, uh, uh, Earth, we got just a little bit of carbon dioxide. On Mars, the place is lousy with it. It's like knee-deep in carbon dioxide. In fact, I say knee-deep. Uh, if you're on the Martian surface at the equator uh, at noon, it's about zero Celsius, about freezing. Here, 10 below here, 30, 40 below Celsius, that quickly. Because the air is so thin. It's so thin on Mars. That was my Martian air. <laughs> so anyway, you say, Bill, this is all great about Mars. I know it. So uh, unlike many of us, my father, spent almost four years in prison camp. 44 months, uh, they, he was in China for most of the war, and then he, uh, World War II, and then he was in, on the island of Japan. And they, they confiscated all their jewelry, including their watches, they took everything. And so my father and his guys, his buddies, would tell time with sundials. This is my father's thing. And he lived through this, and he came back fascinated with sundials. We spent a long time, we would be in the family car with the pull over and take pictures of sundials. We talked about sundials, he made a bronze nigh family sundial. He wrote a book about sundials. <laughs> sundials of Maryland and Virginia. As I, said, I grew up in Washington, D.C. Uh, all my cousins are from Baltimore, yeah, it's all good. Anyway, uh, and he wrote this monograph, this treatise, this essay that appeared in several papers where we would take the Washington Monument, you see, which is this obelisk, this stick, and uh, in sundials this would be called a noon pole, a noon pole, and then you would convert that, you see, into a giant sundial. <laughs> it's an enormous sundial. And if you go there, this time of year is ideal. Shadows are very handy length. You can walk along right with the shadow. It's really satisfying. But, no, it's great. But did the man do that? Did, I mean, this may happen to you more than once uh, as after you graduated from college. Your genius will go unrecognized. It could happen. Of course, it happens to me from time to time. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, hard to believe. Yeah. So, now, you know, if you go to the Washington, there's these big terraces big uh, anti-terrorism things, uh, but they could have been these beautiful plinths, for those of you into Scrabble, plinth, one vowel. <laughs> one vowel, plinth, and it's, a, it's the rock that you put a statue on. It's a Greek word, I guess. You put your statue on your plinth. There could have been some plinths out there. We could have told time. Oh, well. 